Hello and welcome to the session. This is Professor Farhat. In this session, we're going to be looking at IRS Code Section 1231 assets. And this topic is definitely, definitely, definitely covered on the CPA exam. So it's definitely will be there. So I want to make sure you're aware of this. This, this topic is also covered in an income tax course, the enrolled agent exam that's also be covered. Okay. Now, as always, I like to remind you, which is my viewer, to connect with me on a professional level via LinkedIn. Or if, you, if you're a Facebook user, you should, uh, you know, you like my Facebook page and connect with me on a personal level if you chose to. YouTube is where you need to subscribe. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Share the channel with other. Let everybody know that this channel exists if it's benefiting you. And like the videos if you do like them. I do have a Twitter account and a website where I, where I house all my lectures. But YouTube is the complete place, okay? Now, this recording is brought to you by Jaeger CPA Review. So if you like this recording, you are possibly an accounting student or a CPA candidate. If that's the case, Jaeger CPA Review, you can view hundreds of hours of video lectures. You can review thousands of multiple choice questions with detailed solution. You could work dozens of simulations. You can have a textbook, which is a CPA textbook that integrate the blueprint of the IACPA audio lectures, electronic flashcards, plus other resources. Use code PMF and you'll get 15% off of the best valued course. You would benefit yourself and benefit this channel. So let's start to talk about Section 1231 assets. I'm going to give you the big picture on this slide and hopefully I'm going to give you a good summary, a simplified summary that we're going to dig into the details. So what is the purpose of Section 1231? So what is the purpose? Well, for now, I'm not going to define it, what Section 1231 assets are, but I just want you to accept those are business assets. I'm going to define them shortly on the next slide. I just want to give you an idea what's the big, what's the big picture here. So when you sell an asset, when you dispose of an asset, remember, when you dispose of an asset, you have to either compute the gain or the loss. So you either you have a gain, Okay, what, what you do is you compare the uh, consideration received versus the basis. And if you, if you receive more than the basis, you have a gain. If you receive less, you have a loss. Okay, so that's basically the overall idea when you dispose of an asset, because notice it's an asset. Now, the second thing we have to know is if it's a gain or a loss, we need to know the character, character of the gain or the loss. And what's the character of the gain or the loss? You have two characters. It's 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 either be considered capital, capital gain, capital loss, or ordinary. Okay? So this is the overall idea. So you're going to see how Section 1231 plays a good role in this whole big picture. So for the Section 1231, you're going to see what's going to happen when we have a gain, when we have a loss, and if it's Section 1231, why is it important? Why do we need to talk about it? So what's the purpose of Section 1231? It's when we dispose of an asset, we could have a gain or a loss. What is the character of the gain or the loss? When we, when we sell something, it could be a capital gain or an ordinary gain, depending on what the asset is. Okay? Now, Congress, the U.S. government, they want to give tax break to businesses. Why? Because they want to encourage businesses to dispose of assets. When you sell an asset, guess what? Somebody else buy it. And when you sell an asset, you might have to replace that asset. Therefore, the Congress said, let's give businesses an incentive. Encourage them. Let's give them some uh, motivation to replace their asset, to sell their asset, to make it easier for them, to give them a tax break. Okay, so what, what's going to happen is this. So when you sell a business asset that's considered Section 1231, which we have not defined yet, just accept this, you could have a gain or you could have a loss. When you sell an asset, you could have a gain or you could have a loss. What is the character of the gain or the character of the loss? The character of the gain could be a capital gain or could be ordinary gain or capital loss, ordinary loss. Now, from what we know in this course, if you are, if you said you are going to sell an asset and have a gain, would you prefer your gain to be capital gain or would you prefer your gain to be an ordinary gain? Well, I hope you know, I, ha I hope you know from prior session that you prefer the gain to be capital gain. Why? Because capital gain, they have a capital preferential treatment. You remember the 0, 15, and 20%. You don't want it ordinary, right? Ordinary, it could be based on your uh, tax bracket, which could, could be higher. But if it's considered capital, you have this preferential treatment. And you remember, you have the 25% and the 28%. I don't want to forget about those. Now, when you have a loss, do you prefer the loss to be a capital loss or an ordinary loss? Well, I hope you know 
that you would prefer to be the loss as ordinary loss. Why? Because if it's a loss and if it's a capital loss, you are limited to $3,000. Well, you could offset capital gains, but other than offsetting capital gain, you are limited to $3,000 against your ordinary income. So you don't want your loss to be considered capital loss because you are limited. You can only count $3,000. So what you want to do, you want to count the loss as ordinary. And guess what? If it's if you if you dispose of an asset and it's section 1231 asset, if it's a gain, the, the gain could be considered a long-term capital gain, possibly could be considered long-term capital gain. If it's a loss, it be con considered capital loss. So this is why section 1231 are important because they give you the, as Hannah Montana would say, the best of both words. The best of both words. If it's a gain, you can treat it as cap potential. Uh, long-term capital gain and why do I see possible pot potential you're gonna see there's more uh, uh, rules about this but this is the general idea or if it's a loss you want it to be considered an ordinary loss now talking about this let's see what section 1231 is so how do we define section 1231 okay section 1231 are depreciable and real property used in a business or the production of income which is rental property and look 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 please notice they're held more than one year Okay, there's no short term 1231 property. You have no clue how many times my students, um, you know, I tell them the asset is held for nine months, it's a depreciable asset, and I tell them to compute what's taxable, the amount that's the, the amount uh, that's taxable on this transaction, and they treat it as section 1231. Well, guess what? If it's not held more than one year, it's not section 1231. There's no short term section 1231 property, so it has to be more than a year. It's depreciable, depreciable property as well as real property to be more specific it include timber coal iron livestock and harvested crops uh, crops and certain purchase intangible just fyi if you're interested in knowing let me tell you what it does not include so just to be more more specific as what it does not include it does not include property not held for long-term holding period which is property held less than one year it's not uh, section 1231 inventory and property held for sale remember this is uh, ordinary asset a patent, invention, model, or design, a secret formula, and all of those. Uh, an account receivable, notes receivable arising in the ordinary course of business or trade. Again, those are ordinary asset. Ordinary asset. Now, how do we compute Section 1231? Well, there are three steps in computing Section 1231. We're going to go through it step by step. After I go through step one, after I go through step two and step three, I will work a comprehensive example. Uh, showing you step one and step two, then I will show you another example, step three. Okay, so I'm going to go through um, the explanation step by step. Let's start with step one. So what do we do in step one? The step one, we have to net anything that's casualty and theft. So what we do is, we, if we have any section 1231 assets, which are, what are they? Depreciable and real property assets that are either subject to casualty, theft, gain or losses, we're going to net them out together. So what we do is this. Step one, casualty netting. So we look at casualty and they have to be business related casualty. So we're going to look at the current year casualty and theft, gain and losses. We're going to net them together. Okay. Remember, there are going to be section 1231 asset, which is non-personal. It's either business, rental or property use asset only. Okay. So if it's a personal asset and somebody stole it, we lost it. It has nothing to do with this process. It has to be section 1231 asset. So when we net them, we could have a net gain. Well, if we have a net gain, the net gain is, is going to be computed with Section 1231 gain. What does it mean, net gain? It means we took the losses, we took the gain, we net them together. Overall, we have a positive number. If we took the gains and we took the losses from casualty and theft, and we have a net loss, Section 1231 does not apply. So how do we do it under those circumstances? Uh, gain and losses are not combined. We don't combine the gain and the losses here. What does that mean? It means we treat them separately. And the best way to illustrate this, let me give you a short example. Let's take a look at this example. We have casualty gain of 5,000, theft loss of 2,000. Let's net those together. This is plus, this is minus. Overall, we have a plus. What does that mean? It means we have section 1231, not long-term capital gain yet. We have to go through the whole process, but potential long-term capital gain. Let's look at, let's switch the numbers. We have a gain of 2,000, losses of 5,000. Guess what? We have a net loss of net loss of 3,000 here. Hopefully you can see this. Net loss of 3,000, right? We have losses of 5 because I switched numbers and a gain of 2. Well, guess what? Now we don't combine. Gain and losses are not combined. The gain is ordinary gain. So this gain is considered ordinary gain. 
and the loss is an ordinary loss. So we, we don't net them, they are treated separately. Those are the rules. So this is step one. So step one, net casualty gain and losses. If you have a net gain, potential long term, which is section 1231, if it's a loss, don't combine them, treat them separately. Step two, obviously we have two steps. Step two, we're gonna net section 1231 gain and losses. So basically we're gonna go through section 1231 assets, which are depreciable asset. What are they? Let's, let me take a look at it show you one more time we'll look at depreciable and real property used in a business and we're going to net them together now okay we sold them and we're going to net them together as a result we either have a net gain well if it's a net gain well guess what section 1231 applies okay in other words we combine gain and losses if it's a net gain or we could net them and we could have a net loss well if we have a net loss Section 1231 does not apply and gain and losses are not combined. What does that mean? It means the gains are ordinary and the losses are ordinary. Basically similar to step one, similar to step one. And let's take a look at quick numbers. And we're gonna work a comprehensive example, but let's take a look at quick numbers. So we have net casualty theft gain of five, 500, asset sold at a gain of 2000, asset, asset A, asset B sold at a loss of 400 so all overall we have a net gain of 2100 so this is section 1231 gain but we're still in step two we still have another netting process let's assume we have a gain of 500 net casualty theft and gain of 500 asset a sold at a loss of 2000 here we have a loss of 2000 asset b sold at a gain of 400 now we have overall a net loss well if it's overall net loss we don't combine the gains and the losses we're going to treat them separately so what's going to happen is this the 900 gain is ordinary gain which is the 500 from the theft and uh, casualty and theft and the 400 from asset b and the loss is treated separately as an ordinary loss okay the third step is something called the look back look back rule which is this should be one word look back uh, look back look back rule look back rule okay what does it what does the look back rule basically state well here we go net section 1231 gain must be recharacterized as ordinary income by unused net section 1231 losses for the five previous years so here's what's going to happen if you have 1231 gain so let's assume we are standing in 2018 and in 2018 we went through the whole netting process and we happen to have forty thousand dollar section 1231 gain well we don't just say okay the section 1231 gain therefore it's capital gain it's subject to capital gain what we have to do we have to look at 2017 2016 2015 2014 and 2013 and we have to know if we have any section 12 31 losses we have to look back and see if there's any section 1231 losses in those years if there's any section 1231 losses what's going to happen some of that 40,000 let's assume for just for the sake of this example we have a 10,000 section 1231 loss from 2017 remember section 1231 loss what's going to happen is it's considered or it was considered ordinary loss right because if it's a loss, it's considered ordinary loss. So what's going to happen? The forty thousand here, we have to recharacterize re ten thousand of it. So ten thousand of this will be ordinary gain to basically recapture this ten thousand, and thirty thousand of it, the remainder will be capital gain, which is subject to capital gain. So this is the last rule. Let's take a look at another quick example. Then we're going to look at a more comprehensive example. So let's take a look at this. We netted 2018, we have uh, 200 net casualty theft and gain. Uh, we, sell, we sold asset C at uh, 3,000 gain. We sold, as, I'm sorry, um, let's call this asset, uh, I don't know, B, I guess, uh, D, asset D. Asset D at a loss of 600. Overall, if we net these out, we'll net out to 2,600. Now this is section 12, 31 gain which is what does that mean it means it's subject to capital gain but we're going to look back at prior year and let's assume in the prior year in 2017 we had the following we have a net casualty theft gain of 500 asset a sold at a loss of 2000 asset b sold at a gain of 400 so in the prior year we had 1200 and nothing in 2016 and in prior year so just kind of to make this simple so we look back five years and right in the prior year we had a loss of 1100 
Okay, this was section 1231 loss. What does it mean, section 1231 loss? It was considered ordinary loss. What does that mean? It means it offset ordinary income for us, which is, we like this. We like for the ordinary loss to offset ordinary income. So guess what? Since we had ordinary loss used up in the prior year, now it's going to come back and recapture this 2600. So if this 2600, what's going to happen, 1100 of it will be recharacterized as ordinary income. And what's left? What's left is 1500 will be considered long term capital gain. Why did I recharacterize re it? Because I took advantage of 1100 of ordinary losses in the prior year. Once I have uh, uh, section 1231 gains, I have to look in the past five years and recapture this. Okay, and don't worry, I will work another example, a more comprehensive example in the next few slides. So in 2017, we had a section uh, 1231 loss of 1100. In 2018, it came back and it kind of it come, came back and catch up with us. Okay, so we want ordinary losses. So if we want the loss, we want it to be considered ordinary loss. But if we happen to have section 1231 gains, well, before you said it's a section 1231 gains, you have to look back five years. And so section 1231 gain of 2600 is recharacterized as two parts. 1100 will now be considered ordinary gain tax on the, based on your tax bracket. Why? Because you took an ordinary loss in 2017 and the remainder 1500 will be considered long-term capital gain. Now this is a picture of the netting process, which is basically step one, step two, and step three. Hopefully you can see it. If not, I'm just going to go over it real quick. The first thing is we net, remember, we net casualty gains and casualty losses, which are non-personal, which is business. We net them. This is step one. If it's a net gain, it's a, uh, you will add this net gain to section 1231 gain. If the net of these two is a net loss, then we keep them separately. Gains are ordinary income and uh, section 1231 losses are deductible for AGI, other losses are deductible from AGI. Okay, so we just treat them separately, each asset separately. So assuming we have a gain, we go down, and we're gonna combine the gain with the other gains, with the other gains and losses of section 1231 asset. In this step, if overall we have a loss, we go back to this step, and we have ordinary, then if we have a loss, we have an ordinary income, uh, ordinary loss, okay, ordinary ordinary gain the ordinary gain and the ordinary loss are separated they're not combined if we have overall loss in this step if we have a gain in this step we move on then we look at, we look we look at the lookup provisions now we go back and we look at the past 5 years to determine if we have any section 1231 losses okay if there is any section, you know, gain offset by look look back losses is ordinary gain, and remaining gain is long term capital gain. So we look back. If we have any section twelve thirty one losses, those losses will recharacterize the gain as ordinary gain, and anything remain will be considered long term capital gain. Don't worry, I'm going to work an example illustrating step one, step two, and step three next. Okay, but this is the overall picture. So this should be this is basically this is a review. This picture a review of those three steps that I just did. And let's work an example together, okay? During 2018, Ross had 125,000 of adjusted gross income before considering the following, the following recognized gains and losses. So he got uh, Ross, okay? He got capital gain and capital losses, long-term capital gain, long-term capital loss, short-term capital gain, short-term capital loss. Then they have casualties, theft of a diamond ring owned for four months, fire damage to a personal residence owned for 10 years, Gain from insurance recovery on fire due to loss building owned for two years. Okay. Then this is section 1231 gain and losses from the sale of depreciable assets held long term. Asset A, asset B, asset C. There's a loss on asset C. Gain and losses from the sale of depreciable property held short term. Those are short term. Asset D200 and asset E300. So what they want us to do is compute the uh, basically, what's the taxable income for this individual? Okay, adjusted gross income is 125 without taking into consideration those. Well, guess what? What do we do first? What we said, we said in step one, we net all the casualty gain and losses. Okay, let's start with casualty. They're giving you right here, casualty gains and losses. Theft of a diamond ring. Well, diamond ring is a personal use asset. Therefore, I cross this out. I don't use it. Be careful. Fire damage to personal residence. 
uh, uh, personal out. Gain from insurance recovery on on fire loss to business building. Oh, business. Yes, it's counted because it's it's a, it's a casualty business. Therefore, I have a gain. So basically, if I go back to this step, if I want to show it to you on this step, where do we where do we stand here? Basically, all what I have is a gain. So therefore, I have a two hundred dollar gain here. Okay, so basically I don't have any losses here. I have a gain. That's step one. What do we have to do in step two? In step two, it says now this gain goes with the other section 1231. So this gain, it's going to be combined with this. Let's see what happened in this section. In this section, we have 300 plus, 1100 plus, and 500 minus. So if we net all of those together, it's going to give us plus 900. So we have a gain here. Guess what now? We have a 200 plus 900, and those are section 1231, which is 1100. What does that mean? They could be potentially long-term capital gain. Okay, we'd have to wait till the end. All right, this is what we have. Now, gain and losses from the sale of depreciable property, those are separate because those are short-term. Therefore, we cannot net them. You know, they're just separate. They are treated separately. So all in all, what's going to happen is this. So if we are netting, here's what's going to happen. So what's the adjusted gross income? What's the adjusted gross income? First, we have net long-term capital gain, net long-term capital loss. Let's combine those. Those will give us 2,600 plus, we're going to add this 1,200 here to them. So we have 3,700 net long-term capital gain. Now we're going to net those out. We have net um, short-term capital gain also of 800. All right. We don't account for those. We accounted for the 200. You know, we accounted for all of those. Asset D and asset E, they are treated separately. And what does it mean? They're not really treated separately. How do we account for those? Because they are short term, they are ordinary. They are ordinary gain slash loss. Okay? So overall, if we really look at it, we have 125,000 adjusted gross income and uh, net short net, net long term net long term capital gain of 3700 and uh, uh, net short term capital gain of 800 and remember this is basically ordinary income remember net short term capital gain is subject to ordinary income and those two which is it's a loss of 100 which is these asset a and d that's also ordinary income why because it's short short-term capital short-term because they're held for short-term and we have another 100 of short-term okay so simply put if we take 125 and this 100 will offset this 800 so we'll have an, an additional 700 of ordinary income which is 125 700 and this is all tax on ordinary income then the 3700 will be taxed as long-term capital gain and i showed you in the prior slide how to do the taxes we're not gonna, we're not going to compute the taxes i just want to show you that bottom line we have 127,700 of ordinary income and 3700 of long-term capital gain okay now on the next slide i'm going to slightly switch this example Okay, just to show you what would happen if we switch the example. Let me just erase this. So on the next slide, assume just in the previous example, except that asset C was sold at a loss of 1700. So asset C, what's gonna happen here, now it's sold at a loss of 1700. This is gonna change a lot. What does it mean? Well, if asset C is a sold at a loss of 1700, Nothing changed here, so this is not counted, this is not counted, this is still 200 that's going to come down here. But remember what's going to happen here. If we have a loss of 1700, okay, 1700, overall we're going to have a loss. So basically, back to this step. This is what we had step one. So step one, so far so good. When we get to step two, in step two we're going to have a loss here. Why? Because 1700 minus plus 1100 plus 300 plus 200 it's going to be minus it's going to be so overall this is a loss this is a loss what does that mean well if it's a loss it means go back to this step 1b and treat the gains and the loss separately okay so let me show you what's going to happen here uh, let's let's look at this so the net long-term capital gain 2600 where did this came from this is right here so let me just show you where everything's coming from 
So overall, this is the 2,600. So this is the 2,600. Net short-term capital gain, 800. This 800 from those two, netting those two 800. Now, in the prior session, I netted those two out. I made them 100, 100 loss, and I said this is ordinary income. I can do that, but that's fine. This is ordinary income and ordinary loss. This is the same also. So, so far, so good. Everything is the same. What's going to change is the net ordinary loss on asset A, B, C, and Section 1231 gains. It's going to be over a net loss of 100, a net loss of 100. Okay? So this is what changed. And let's take a look at this example where we work a look back period, look back period. So Kashera has the following net 1231, uh, section 1231 as a result from each of the following years shown. What would be the nature of the net gain of 2017 and 2018? So they want us to know what's the nature of net gain of 2017 and 2018. Okay. Well, let's look at 2017 first. Well, before we look at 2017, well, we have to make sure we, we understand how the netting works. So they're asking us, simply put, how do we treat this 30000 gain and $41,000 gain? They are Section 1231 gain, but are they really Section 1231 gain? Well, we have to go through the look-back period. The first thing is this. If you notice, in 2015, 2014, and 2013, we have losses. So let's add up all the losses. 40, 80, um, 5-3 we have 93,000 of losses okay so basically this $41,000 in 2016 this $41,000 in 2016 okay that's supposed to be section 1231 was recharacterized to ordinary income why because this 41,000 was recharacterized because in the prior five years we had section 1231 losses therefore What's going to happen is the, they're not asking us for 2016, but it's good to know that 2016, we had 41,000 of ordinary income. So the 2016 was treated as ordinary income. As a result, remember, we had 93,000, then we used up 41,000 out of it. What's going to happen is this, 0, 0, 0, 8, th oh, 2, and five. So we have fifty-two thousand remaining. Fifty-two thousand dollars. Fifty-two thousand of section twelve thirty-one remaining in the past five years. Now let's take a look at the thirty thousand in twenty seventeen. So twenty seventeen, we have thirty thousand section twelve thirty-one. But guess what? It's also going to be recharacterized to ordinary income. Why? Because if we look at the past five years, five, four, three, two, one, what's going to happen is we're going to take the thirty-one thousand and convert it back. So 2017, we also have $30,000 of ordinary income. So it's not cap Section 1231 long-term capital gain. It's treated as ordinary income. Now, remember, we had 52000 and we used up 30000 out of it. We still have 22000 remaining of Section 1231 losses. We look at 2018. 2018, we have 41000 potential Section 1231 long-term capital gain. All right, well, if it's 31000 41,000. Looking back at the past five years, we still have 22,000. 22,000 is uh, Section 1231 gain. Okay, well, what's going to happen is this. This 41,000, 22,000 of it will be turned into ordinary income, and 19,000 of it will be considered long-term capital gain. Okay, and basically at this point, we have used up all the Section 1231 losses. So, to answer the question, what is the nature of the gain in 2017? It was ordinary income, and 2016 was ordinary income. What about 2018? Well, 2018, what we have left is 22,000 of Section 1231 loss due to the look-back period. Therefore, of the 41,000, 22,000 would be considered ordinary income, and 19,000 would be considered long-term capital gain. Okay, and this way I kept the look back period for a separate example because it's easier to deal with it separately than combining it with everything else. If you have any questions, any comments about this recording, please email me. If you're studying for your CPE exam, study hard. This topic is definitely 100% covered on the exam. If you happen to visit my website for additional lectures, please consider donating. Good luck, study hard, it's worth it.